questions now for Chris or questions for the commissioners on this. Like, you know, this was a learning process for all of us. I think a different budget presentation that has been made in the past. I think that maybe even in my mind there was a misconception uh, as to the the strength of, of the county's finances. The county finances, finances are strong, but you, and you saw the, the growth that we had last year and the, and the revenues that we had. But you also saw when you match that up with the employment and the number of employees, and again, you can switch back to that. Um, between 2013 and 2014, we've already spent as much money as we can to regain employees and to provide compensation to employees. Um, and again, that's a critical one, but. On the operational side of this thing, employees drive this budget. And again, 2011 is when we hit, hit the bottom. We actually went six months without any sales tax. We dropped to 157 non-criminal uh, justice employees. We dropped to 469 criminal justice system employees. We dropped a total of 626 employees in these two funds. Uh, already since 2011, so you have 12 we made gains back, 13 we made gains back, and in 14 there's additional employees being funded. But when you see those numbers, again, on the non-criminal justice employees, the bottom black line, they're at 180, and we're calling for a freeze on that 180 because we cannot operationally justify paying into the future any more than that number. On the, on the non-criminal justice side, by the way, it's still below both 2009 and 2010, which were good years pre-sales pre tax failures. The real growth it has been in the, in the criminal justice area. We've gone from 469 to 582, so we've gained in, again, that would be the courts, and primarily, by the way, I, could, I don't want to say the courts first, because I have the courts over here, in the sheriff's office in particular, and that's primarily in the jail side in order to bring that jail back to 501 bed capacity, but also on the patrol side. Been a tremendous growth of employees, also in the prosecutor's office, uh, John, I know, laid off in 2011 and uh, 11, I mean, 12 plus employees, possibly more. And we've authorized that growth. So those are the two largest areas of growth. So I don't want to say the courts first. There's been some other growth in, in some of the other areas and so forth. But those are real numbers. I think they're probably surprising to everybody yeah. that the growth has been that large. But when you take you know, 626 employees and you jump into 762, that's a, a increase of a 140 employees uh, plus. So the average between salary and again, you know, that's a median. I didn't do an average, but between salary, uh, health benefits, and, and public employment retirement that we contributed to this thing. I mean, that's an average of 50 to 60 thousand dollars, probably more in some cases. Employees. You multiply that out times 140 employees, and you're talking about a growth on an annual basis. You know, of nine million dollars in, in those operational funds. So we we are healthy. We will be healthy into the future. But the big jump and getting healthy, we've already done that. We've already taken those steps. So at this point in the budget presentation, is that at this point we now have to stabilize, project into the future, and determine where we go in order to again live within our means. That's true. We have some other, by the way, capital. Um, Chris has shown these capital numbers as indicated the need into the future. I don't think that a, a million dollars per year is probably sufficient to satisfy the, the county's capital needs. Again, he mentions just the cost of the jail, which, which will be coming up this year, you know, one point million dollars, one point eight million dollars, an extraordinary sum. Um, you know, we have other issues like that. The county office going, in, by the way, and uh, again, we've already authorized a very sophisticated architectural study, but when you drive down to those parking lots, we understand that we have severe, serious and severe deterioration, uh, both to the concrete and to the rebar in that building, and we anticipate that there's going to be a very substantial cost to repair that. We have those costs in the future. The other big one that is looming out there, and that is, is in the part of this presentation, and that is the 800 megahertz radio system. You know, presently is half owned by the county and half owned by the city of Canton. Um, we know from Motorola, by the way, that that radio system that we have will become outdated in probably 2017 or 2018. Um, they are going to what's called the, the uh, next, next, next gen. gen. Next gen. Next, next generation. Uh, 
much more sophisticated system, but Motorola actually since that made the repair parts for the systems that we have. In 2017, we were told we're looking at, therefore, uh, several options. By the way, one is to buy a system outright, which is probably uh, not possible because the cost of a radio <coughs> is probably $12 million Walmart. You know, we're talking about possibly doing something with the state of Ohio on the Mark system. But even that's going to require you know, three to four or five to six million dollars in capital costs and so forth. Because when you update the radio system, and then you have to update all the dispatch councils which are going to react with it. So we have some serious capital, and these are criminal justice capital needs in our future. Um, again, the sheriff is very familiar and understands radio much better than I do. But these are here, and we have to face them, we have to plan for them which is another reason why we can't be using capital money for operational work. But again, please, please ask questions so we can, uh, again, questions may lead to us making some adjustments, but questions may lead to some greater clarification for the plan. I just wonder what um, assumptions, I'm not talking about a, a particular budget area, but what assumptions were made relative to technology? We, we all talk about it all the time and in a five-year period. Quite honestly, I don't think, I don't think it's been said. No one here today knows what it's going to be like five years from now. I'm just wondering what, it was, what assumptions were made in terms of the future expenditures in the area of technology. And, and before you drift that, go to, go to the one again. Show the capital expenditures because I think it's important to see Part of Chris's presentation was that, again, when we hit the low with the sales tax and so forth, the areas that we did not address for three or four years, in addition, by the way, to employees not getting any raises for three or four years, another area that went dry was, you know, capital investment. And that capital was in such things as roofs and so forth, but it was also an area of IT. And we're really in the process right now of scaling up Currently, IT needs. What are our IT expenses going into this year? So or for capital, that's where the predominance of the capital budgets come from. This year, their IT's got 400. There's 432 in the IT capital budget, and and really, IT and Anita can probably speak to this. There's also another 450 in telecom. It's really IT and telecom are really starting to come together because there's so much of those systems and the technology. That interact. That's just for that's just for this year. So that would be part of it. thousand dollar commitment towards IT. By the way, this is an area in which we've been spending almost nothing. And uh, you know, Alan again and or Anita can address that. What do you foresee into the future? Well, when we pre when we do present our uh, budget uh, to the commissioners, and I know it just it looks a little skewed in, in what the request is too. Uh, but uh, for the past couple years, we've uh, been providing a three-year forecast uh, just to uh, projects that we know are coming down the, the, the pipe or uh, capital that we, uh, or, or machines that we know we're going to need to replace. So uh, we've been working toward that. So, you know, for, for this year, uh, you know, we're very grateful for the, uh, for the appropriation that the commissioners have proposed because it'll, it will let us uh, accomplish our goals uh, to keep supporting everybody here. So, And, and Rick, the, into the future, those capital numbers, uh, their, those investments will be part of the capital budgets. And, and to Commissioner Burnaby's point, the, the million dollars is probably low <coughs> in what's going on. Um, the, two thing, the two things that are, you know, again, you saw where even in the out years, we're a little bit behind. There's, there's two main, hopefully, conservatives not afraid, the two places uh, hopefully we gain ground moving ahead is this is built one is just the revenue assumptions are a little bit conservative and revenues come in a little farther than what we'd see so we have that the second thing is that budget assumes that every dollar appropriated is spent we don't always spend hundred percent of the appropriation so if we just spend it ninety nine thousand and that frees up for ninety nine percent that's six hundred thousand that's kind of that goes into the carryover that the intention is that's what helps supplement that capital budget moving forward that piece of that piece of the conservative nature of the model. So the million's kind of there because, and also if I'd have gone two million into that forecast because of trying to maintain that carryover out five years, I would have had to cut more, again, more out of this year's operational budgets to maintain that carryover. So that's part of where I tried to give it back to not make the cuts. The reductions this year is deep. 
So that's part of what that's built. But hopefully by understanding, you know, we spend less than what we appropriate, and that helps back build that capital budget moving forward. And the early part of the assumptions, again, this his planning has to be conservative in order to deal with the ups and the downs and conveyance fees and other things and you can see how they bounce around um, but what he has done we don't want you to think it's so conservative by the way that we're hiding money from you so that you can't give people raises or do other things that you want to do um, and that's why that early chart was important the budget commission is conservative and they, they have to be conservative also but i think their estimates were 55 55 man. 55 so the budget commission is actually certified 55 million his budget assumptions assume that, that we will have more liberal growth than that and i think you're using a number about 58 59 change 59 so again we're not trying to take money you know scroll it away or hide it in the numbers um, we've taken it i mean that's an aggressive perspective because i think <coughs> we would have been using you know the budget commission's numbers and, and, and really underestimated revenue we're trying to be, you know, as accurate as we can with regard to this thing. I'm trying to answer that kind of a concern that I know is kind of exists in the back of everyone's mind. Uh, we have to be conservative, but we're not trying to be so conservative that this is not realistic. We think this is you know, very realistic. And, and again, the main point is just we're trying to set this baseline this year that's sustainable and manageable moving forward. Because if we if we miss it this year and next year, then we're in deep trouble two and three years out. And it's a lot easier if things are better in two or three years than what we've got forecasted, and that's why we'll update this twice a year. Then you know we can look at what where the investments can be made and what changes can be gone. But we don't want to set that baseline and set us on a trajectory where two or three years out, we have to lay an employee off. We have to do different things, you know, those things that we had to do before. We don't want to put ourselves on a trajectory that puts us into that that problem a couple of years out. Anybody again the package then that Chris has put together includes all of this information a lot of these graphs are in color Which is why he's going to email it to you because you're printed You know when you receive the black and white colors turn out you can't see it So he will email that to anybody and everybody and that that way you'll see these graphs in full color But again the last 20 pages of your documents that's been passed out of course are the actual you know, budget allocations that are that are being recommended to the commissioners for adoption next week and again, stay for another hour and a half. I'll be more than happy to go through each slide. <laughs> Chris is actually here for today, tomorrow, whatever you need to do to get in touch with him, by the way, with regard to your concerns, questions, and so forth with regard to your individual budget. Um, there being nothing in Calvin. Always invite the elected officials or other representatives to our monthly financial meeting as well so they can get a month to month update on the numbers. Thank you. Yeah, that is the second Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m. in the boardroom. And again, we we'll follow a report that's provided to us by the auditor and by the uh, treasurer every month. I mean, those documents are presented. They're you know, month end documents, and that's why we need to be on that. And we review where we are year to date and then the comparison to, uh, to the previous 12 month period of time. So, yeah. so it's you know, good stuff. Just a couple comments and comments. First, um, just a general comment about this building coming into it. I applaud the commissioners for the improvements that I see being made to this building. It looks better than I've ever seen it look before. It has a look of a building that's being cared for um, and I think gives a better indication about the operation behind government. I know there's a lot of work to be done in the garage of the building. I also compliment you on the amount of information that you're sharing with us um, that's helpful we've been through some very very difficult times in this county where people didn't get raises for a number of years and capital improvements were not made and i also compliment you and applaud you for the planning that you're doing and especially the capital improvement planning that you're going through because it's a it's a shift i think in philosophy and, and a very good shift and trying to plan for the future and, and my compliments to you for putting this together because I think it helps a lot in terms of having more information is better um, and it gives us a better understanding of what you're doing and, and you know appreciate the compliments on the building I mean I love the way it looks when we walk in that was the, a lot of people's ideas and efforts but we thank the course by the way because you set a very high bar for us 
by the way, meeting the standards of the uh, both the bow building as, as well as the uh, general sports facility. Thank you. Anything else from anybody? Again, commissioners, last chance. I think the only other comment I'd make is the biggest part of our costs is healthcare costs, mm -hmm. and we are going to do a thorough review of our of our plans and everything involved with the delivery of the healthcare costs. So if you have any ideas of how to, you know, through wellness programs or anything like that, uh, get it to us because we are going to put it out for an RFP this year and good, get with Carol Hahn because Carol handles all of our benefits and give her give your thoughts because. We spend $16 million on health care costs, and if we can trim that back a little bit, that would help everybody, too. If there being nothing else, Chris, in particular, we thank you for all of your time and effort into this. And again, that concludes today's meeting. Thank you. <coughs>